Hello, I'm Atu Jamir and you're watching Hornbill TV's Prime at 9, now headlines. Army Chief General M.M. Navani expressed regret over the civilian killing case in Oting, Nagaland on December 4th. He assured that the case is being thoroughly investigated. The Samajwadi Party named Nationalist Congress Party K.K. Sharma as the party's first candidate for the UP Assembly elections. The NCP leader K.K. Sharma will contest Bulan Shah's Anupshar constituency as a joint candidate of SP and CP. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath is likely to contest assembly elections from Ayodhya. A party functionary said the issue of Adityanath's candidature from Ayodhya came up for the discussion at the meeting. Two separate grenade attacks were reported in the locality of the two Congress intending candidates. Manipur. One of the intending candidates said that it was suspected to be politically motivated. Indian Army Chief General M.M. Navani today expressed the regret of civilian killings by Special Forces troops in Oting of Nagaland last year and said the matter is being thoroughly investigated. The regrettable incident that occurred in Oting, Nagaland on December 4 is being thoroughly investigated, the Army Chief said. The Army remains committed to the security of countrymen even during the conduct of operations, said General M.M. Navani. In the northeast again, the regrettable incident which happened in Oting in Nagaland on 4th of December is being thoroughly investigated. We remain committed to the security of our countrymen even during the conduct of operations. We have SOPs that uh, encapsulate our operational experience which have been refined over a period of time and appropriate action will be taken and corrective measures instituted to further refine these, based, of course, on the outcome of the investigations. To tell us more about the likely ramifications of General M.M. M. Navani's statement, we have in our newsroom our senior news analyst, El Muli. Thank you so much, El, for joining us today as well. So going straight to the discussion here, could you please tell us what is the significance of the Indian Army Chief himself expressing regret for the Mon ambush? Considering this is not the first time the military has committed excess, but there have been few or no statements of regret or apologies from the military. Yes, uh, the statement of the Army Chief is very significant, or too, exceedingly significant, as you have just pointed out here. Uh, this is probably the first time uh, since the Armed Forces Special Powers Act has been uh, was established in the Northeast and Kashmir that we are actually hearing someone, nothing less than the chief of the Indian military himself, expressing regrets for something that happened. And this is uh, quite sur surprising, but it is very significant. Now, uh, there is an aspect to this. It's not just an expression of regret for something that happened. Here we are talking about the Indian military chief himself uh, suggesting, and in my opinion, it's a very low key uh, uh, admission of guilt here. Uh, to here we are talking about the military chief, uh, one of the uh, he is the chief of one of the biggest militaries in the world, and he must know what is going on. He must have been. He must have intelligence reports from investigative officers. He must be in touch with his military advisors regarding what they what they did in regard to the Mon ambush. He must know the tone of the conversation, the weather in the military establishment. So. All his statements, they must have come from a place of assurance that, oh, certainly something bad. There was an omission of, uh, omission of 
there was omissions. There, there was, there was uh, guilt. There was something wrong that happened in Mon during that time. So he must be aware of all this. So his statements reflect reflect the weather in the military establishment are too. All right. Else, also, we'd want to know in what way does his statement reflect an agreement in the army or government that something deserving of regret actually happened? Uh, yes. Uh, just as we were talking a little while ago, the Indian military chief is not a poor grade. He's not a public relations officer. Or two. He is the head of one of the most regulated, heavily regulated, secretive and highly uh, scrutinized organs of the government. And in this case is the military chief himself. Every statement that he makes in public, it could be a press conference, statements that he gives out in newsletters or speeches he makes in public events, they all have to pass through certain levels of scrutiny. Uh, to, it has to pass through the oversight board of officials, for example. It has to pass his military advisors. And there are administrative advisors who advise him on what to say, what not to say, and yes, I am very sure that the investigative officers who are investigating the Mon ambush, they're reporting to him. So this is not an ordinary guy and his statements reflect, uh, his statements not only reflect what is going on, especially in the investiga uh, investigations, but it also reflects the tone of conversation within the military establishment in regard to what happened or what may not have happened in the Mon ambush or two. Also, Al, uh, do you think his statement reflects the direction that the military court of inquiries, investigation might be taking? Uh, not, not likely, not likely. Uh, say, uh, we have to remember that there are actually two entities currently who are investigating the Mon uh, ambush. Uh, two. One is the special investigative uh, team that was instated by the government of Nagaland and the other is the military's own court of inquiry. So there are two entities that are investigating the Mon ambush. Now, when the findings are released, their findings may contradict or they might not but whatever the case, as I have said, he's in touch with the intelligence officers. I'm sure they're reporting to him. That is, that is something uh, not out of the plate. And he knows what is going on. He knows the tone of the conversation. He knows the weather within the military establishment. He knows what is going on. So his statements reflect, reflect that there might have been uh, a commission of guilt somewhere. There must have been a failure somewhere. So his statements might not directly impact the direction the investigation, investigations are going, but it certainly reflects the findings of the investigation. And it would be, it would be very interesting to see what the two entities will release when they complete their investigations are too. Right. Uh, also, we uh, would want to know will his statement have any bearing on major policy decisions, such as the central government possibly deciding to repeal the AFSPA. After all, uh, the army chief le leads the military, and his statements carry relevance. Uh, not likely. Uh, not at all. Yeah, the Indian government will certainly get in touch with the military chiefs, the military establishment, and the military advisors whenever they are about to enact, uh, let's say. A legislation that involves the use of arms for example the use of militaries for example and they will certainly take recommendations and suggestions from the military but one thing we have to remember here is that the military is only a small organ of the government of India legislating a law or repealing a law is only a prerogative of the parliament of the policy makers so while the government might approach the Indian military chief and say, hey, give us some ideas. What do you think about this? But it wouldn't have any bearing on the legislation or whether it's removed or whether it is retained. And we must also remember here that actually the Indian military has been opposing any move against the uh, uh, government of uh, government of India repealing or amending the law to actually they have been opposing it for many years since the demand for repealing the law rose from the northeast region the mm -hmm. claim is that if the government of India repeals the law or amends it 
it will make the work of the Indian military, especially in the North, is less effective, especially in the context of entire insurgency operations are too. Right. Uh, thank you so much, El, for joining us today. That was quite informative. Thank you, Artu. Now moving on to the next news. Nagaland saw a single day rise of 199 new COVID-19 cases, taking states Delhi to 32,530. The state's positivity rate has jumped to 15.58%. Of the fresh cases, 187 cases were reported from Dimapur, 10 from Kohima and 2 from Mokokchung. Out of 32,530 total cases, 3,4,039 4,039 have been recovered and there are 242 active cases so far. The state government has reimposed night curfew, restricted mass gatherings and directed schools not to hold classes up to class 8 till January 31st to check the spread of coronavirus. Nagaland Chief Secretary Jay Alam has ordered night curfew from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. from Sunday and restrictions on mass gatherings to 50% of the capacity of the venue or up to maximum of 200 people, whichever is slower. Subject to all those taking part are fully vaccinated. Four day long 50th anniversary of Western Angami D Sports Association has begins begun today at Kiropema Village Ground, Petucha, which Chief Minister Nipuria asked the special guest and MLA Kenny Zako Nakro as a guest of honor. The sports will conclude on January 15. While addressing the gathering, the Chief Minister congratulated the WADSA for attaining its Golden Jubilee and Kiropema Village for coming up with a standard local ground, which will benefit the youngsters in various sports disciplines and also boost and promote sports persons in various fields. Rio also reiterated that the state government is committed to promote sports persons and the state would soon have better sporting infrastructure and facilities to provide better opportunities to upcoming youngsters. The Chief Minister lamented that Nagaland, after attaining statehood 41 years later, participated at the national level very late behind other states. Western Angami D Sports Association Tichye Hippengu Nyu Karakranu Kechye Ho Sekasa Mandolet Stone Shike Lumi Bu Kekasa Mi Bu Rakrat Tuli Kudala Kechye Sesada Mo Oko Kepanyabu Get Ho that's Uzamunza Siliro, Uko ground kesawa, Kiripema, ground hole shuri, Kulilagalis, Susa Chile there, Mumha got Chavorgela, Muchavorgela, Katese Kabe, Kapula Fatosia. Nen Dunye, seventy two years, Vokata, Mesegi, Kapata Nipu, Penogale Susa Chile, Mupotia Vordi, Uko Western Angami D Group Sport Association, how no. Vordi, Ugo Chief Guest Secretary Susa, Zega Segas with the Chava, Sala Unisue, Muk Kapatau, Mpejir, Pekrizaway, Gajasa City, Hakanu, Seka Zasia. Earlier, the Chief Minister inaugurated the WADSA's 50th anniversary at 
Kirupema Ground Monolith. During the inaugural girls session, Naga Wrestling Competition was held for senior and junior categories. On January 14, President Setu Zipza, Gazetted Officers Kroto Nevikoli Akotso will flag off marathon race at 6 a.m. Over 700 players are participating in different kinds of sports such as Naga Wrestling, Race, Jump, Throw, Marathon, Football and Volleyball. As new directives were issued from the government of Nagaland on January 9 in regard to the system operating procedures related to COVID-19, as the third wave looms in the air, one major hub for the coronavirus to spread would be the daily and weekly marketplaces in Dimapur. Though the government has issued the malls, shopping complexes, restaurants and many other places to operate with 50% capacity and public be vaccinated with both doses, places like supermarket, which could easily be one of the largest bazaars in the commercial hub, still have thousands of people thronging on Wednesdays. The government has still yet to give relevant directives for the daily and weekly bazaars. Let's have a look at the details. We're here at the hub of Dimapur town, which is the supermarket, and today is a Wednesday. As we can see, that uh, even though the government has issued new SOPs on January 9th uh, regarding how uh, the new SOP should be, is that 50% um, capacity of every public gathering or social, religious, or even cultural events all should be either 50% capacity or 200 people maximum. Which, whichever is lesser but then as we can see um, the government has not issued any SOPs for such marketplaces as yet such as it could be the new market or supermarket or various other weekly bazaars and people are still thronging the markets and some we can see that uh, some are maskless but then again a lot of people are following the SOPs so let's have a look at more what's happening in this market. So as we have just seen uh, in supermarket, which is probably one of the biggest bazaars or markets you can say in the commercial hub of Dimapur and even though it's buzzing and thronging with people left and right, people seem to be following, at least 90% of the people seem to be following the rules and regulations and the new SOPs of masking up and also uh, we have also witnessed that a lot of sanitizers have been kept in the shops, grocery shops and all. So uh, it is a good thing to see and it's a positive thing to see that uh, a lot of people are taking the precautionary measures in Dimapur, especially in this uh, big market of supermarket. Reporter Esther with camera person Joy for Hornbill TV. In a series of pre-poll related violence happening in the state of Manipur, two separate grenade attacks happened to two Congress intending candidates of Kurai Assembly constituency at Wangoy Assembly constituency. Talking to Hornbill TV, Ratan Kumar, Congress party intending candidate of Kurai said that around 3 a.m. some unidentified miscreants lobbed grenade to his home. He also said that nobody sustained injury, however, some property was damaged. Kumar said he has no personal enmity with anyone as such he suspects it as a politically motivated attack. He claimed that he is the winning candidate and the grenade attack was probably to intimidate him. I don't know anything else about the matter, what for they have done it. It may be political. Any injuries? Nothing else, no injuries, nothing. And uh, damage are there in the house part and the vehicle part and somewhere in the house, somewhere in the vehicle, somewhere in the floor, that much only way. Government should Order. organize peacefully then election and this much only I request to all the politicians intending candidates and the government to have a peaceful election during this time. At the residence of Kumar, people from his locality carried out seat in protest against the grenade lobbying incident. The other grenade attack was also reported from another Congress party intending candidate Salam Joy of Wangoi AC. 
Some days back, two PJP workers were shot dead at Wangoi AC Samro area and the bodies of two deceased is yet to claimed by the relatives. Sit in protests and different kinds of agitations were also reportedly held in Samroi and other areas of Wangoi AC. Locals said situation in entire Wangoi AC is tense. On a day when the Supreme Court appointed an inquiry committee headed by the former judge Indu Motra to probe the security breach during Prime Minister Narendra Modi's recent visit to Punjab, the PJP reiterated its allegation that the violation was deliberate and sought to know who in the Congress would benefit out of the security breach of Prime Minister. Addressing a press conference an hour after the Apex Court's order, Union Minister and senior PJP leader Smriti Irani said, Why were security measures for the Prime Minister which our protocols deliberately breached with active convenience of the Congress-led government, who sought to benefit in the Congress party from the breach of the Prime Minister's security, who in the Punjab government continued to deliberately ignore the threats to the Prime Minister's security, Irani said. The Congress High Commons should respond to the questions. प्रधान मंत्री देश भर में लोगों से मिलते हैं लेकिन लोगों से मिलने और सुरक्षा भंग करने में जमीन आसमान का फर्क है ये मुख्यमंत्री पंजाब भी जानते हैं जो मुख्यमंत्री दो अलग अलग बयान देते हैं कहते हैं कि मैं प्रधानमंत्री के सामने प्रस्तुत होने वाला था लेकिन मैं कोविड के लोगों से घिरा हुआ था इसलिए प्रस्तुत नहीं हो पाया लेकिन वही मुख्यमंत्री फिर दोपहर को सार्वजनिक के कार्यक्रम में जाते हैं तो उनके किस कथन पर किस बयान पर मैं विश्वास करूं क्यों 20 मिनट तक प्रधानमंत्री की सिक्योरिटी ब्रीच हुई इसका जवाब नहीं आया क्यों डीजीपी पुलिस ने यह झूठा आश्वासन दिया कि रोड क्लियर है इसका जवाब नहीं आया किसने लोगों को बताया कि उस वक्त प्रधानमंत्री कहां मौजूद होंगे वो जानकारी सिर्फ प्रदेश की कांग्रेस सरकार और लोकल पुलिस अपैरेटिस के पास थी इसका जवाब भी अब तक नहीं आया और किसके कहने पर कांग्रेस के नेता जश्न मना रहे थे कि प्रधानमंत्री की सुरक्षा भंग हुई किसको कांग्रेस पार्टी में लगा कि इस प्रकार का उत्सव मनाने से गांधी परिवार उनकी पीठ थपथ पाएगी Ahead of Uttar Pradesh Assembly election, former Congress and Samajwadi Party MLAs joined PJP on January 12th. They joined Parada Janata Party in presence of Uttar Pradesh PJP Chief Sudandra Dev Singh, Deputy Chief Minister Keshav Prasad Moria and Dinesh Sharma. The polling in Uttar Pradesh will be held on February 10, 14, 20, 23, 27 and March 3 and 7 phases. This is the Bharti Janata Party. हर क्षेत्र में विफल है जनता से किए हुए वादे चाहे वो किसानों से किए हों व्यापारियों से किए हों कानून व्यवस्था का मामला हो या बेरोजगारी बेरोजगार नवयुवकों का मामला हो हर क्षेत्र में यह सरकार विफल है आज पूरे देश की जनता तराही तराही कर रही है और बदलाव चाहती है हम लोग कांग्रेस में रहते हुए भी हम लोगों ने यह आवाज़ उठाई इमरान भाई ने भी यह आवाज़ उठाई प्रमुखता से के भारतीय जनता पार्टी को हटाने के लिए यहाँ पर एक गठजोड़ होना चाहिए लेकिन वो बात नहीं चली तो पूरा बदलाव जनता बदलाव चाहती है और सीधा सीधा चुनाव भारतीय जनता पार्टी और समाजवादी पार्टी के बीच है इसलिए हम लोगों ने फैसला लिया है कि हम समाजवादी पार्टी के साथ जाएँ the Samajwadi Party on Wednesday named Nationalist Congress Party K.K. Sharma as the party's first candidate for UP Assembly elections. The announcement was made on Twitter by the Samajwadi Party after the first joint meeting of the coalition led by the Akhilesh Yadav-led SP. The NCP leader K.K. Sharma will contest Bulandashar's Anupshar constituency as the joint candidate of SP-NCP, the Samajwadi Party said. NCP UP chief Umar Shankar Yadavji met the SP national President Akhilesh Yadav and discuss elections. The NCP leader K.K. Sharma will be the joint candidate of the SPNCP for the Anupshar constituency of Pulandashar. There will be a change in 2022, the SP tweeted, echoing the message that NCP chief Sharad Pawar made in Maharashtra when he spoke about the alliance between the NCP and SP in Uttar Pradesh. The Parthi Janata Party will lose the election and there will be a regime change, said Pawar, underlining that parties that share an ideology will align and try to give an alternative. The announcement came hours after SP chief Akhilesh Yadav held the first joint meeting of the SP's alliance partners, Rashtriya Lok Dal, Suldev Parada Samaj Party, 
Danwati Party, Mahandal Apna Dal, and Prakardishil Samajwati Party Luhai at the party's Janeshwar Mishra Trust Office in Lucknow. The meeting went on for three hours. That's all we have for now. Keep watching Hornbill TV.